Hey, what's the deal, people? It's your boy, Big Star Raw Sports, uh, here for another classic episode of Legends Week uh, here on Raw Sports Films Instagram page. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you go to the YouTube, uh, to the Raw Sports Films YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, uh, rawsports.tv is the website. You know, make sure you log on. And, um, you know, if you've missed any of the Legends Week series, um, make sure you go on and, and check them out, man. Um, it's been a great response from the people. Thank you guys for tuning in night after night, week after week. Um, it's been it's been crazy, man. Um, tonight we got a, another treat. Uh, Pennsylvania high school legend, my man Sean Colson. Um, this generation may know him as you know Sean Colson, the trainer, um, you know high school basketball coach, things of that nature. Um, but he has a, an amazing history um, as far as basketball um, here in the you know here in Pennsylvania and beyond. You know college hoops, he played professionally and all that kind of stuff, man. So uh, going to wait for my man uh, Sean Colson to join, man. And I'm you know I'm sure he's he's definitely going to bless us with some amazing high school basketball stories and beyond. See my man Rashi Brooklyn Burrow in the building. Building. What's up, big dog? Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, pretty much um, it, it's, it's been great. It's, it's been a great response from the people. Um, I have tons and tons and tons more um, guys on deck. I mean, um, since, you know, this is this is week three of Legends Week and tomorrow uh, is the grand finale of week three. Um, but already going for I mean, I have weeks scheduled out for weeks man the, the response has been crazy the response has been crazy from all the legends man um just you know i can't thank you guys enough for all your support i see my man sean colson just joined we're gonna get him on Hey, Sean, if you're there, um, send me a request to join. I think I tried to send you one. Uh, I'll do it again. Hey, Sean, I think I'm not sure why um, it's I tried to send you the request and it said unable to join. Um, if you need to just go out, just go go out of the live video and then come right back in and it should give you the option to send me a request to join. Then I'll accept it and it'll uh, put you right on the screen with me. I'll get my man on the screen here in a second. Um, if you just tuned in, it's your boy Big Star Raw Sports Legends Week. Um, today's guest got my man Sean Colson, Philadelphia area legend, you know, college legend. Played professional ball. Gonna get him on here in a second as soon as we work out these little details here. We're going to get there in a second, people. I appreciate y'all patience. Appreciate y'all tuning in. I'll get my guy on the screen here in a second. Hey, Sean, if you can see me, if you can hear me, um, exit out of, um, like, go out of the live video, uh, go out of the broadcast, and then and then go back in and see if you can um, send me the request at that point to join on the screen with me. If not, I'll start it over on my end and then see if we can get you on then. What's the deal, big dog? I'm here, man. What's good? What's good?
If you just tuned in, we got my man Sean Colson. I'm trying to get him on the screen now. Tonight's guest for Legends Week. Just bear with me. If I need to, people, I may need to um, just end the video and get my guy on. But we definitely going to get it. We definitely going to make it happen. There we go. My God, there he is. <laughs> what up, man? <laughs> What's going on, big dog? How you feel, brother? I'm I'm good, man. That's that's a blessing. Um, um, thanks for joining me, man, tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to a classic conversation. Thank you for your time in advance, man. Um, you know, I pray, you know, you and your family is all well and everybody's blessed right now. How, how, how's everything been going for you, brother? Everything's good, man. Just uh, trying to get through it just like everybody else. That's it. I, I know that's right, man. Well, hey, um, you know, right off the top, just, you know, get yourself comfortable, man. We're going to be here for a second, man. You know, right. hearing from the legend himself. Um, here, here, here on Legends Week, man, just want to run through two things real quick. Um, you know, my, my two main goals, man, are to just educate the younger generation on, on who individuals like you are, you know, the legend, you know, Sean Colson. And then also um, just to make sure people never forget, you know, about your legacy, um, your contribution to the game, all the things that you did on every level. Um, and then even the, the positive things that you're doing right now, man, I just want to, you know, um, just do all I can to solidify your legacy and just pay homage to, to what you gave, you know, what you what you've given to the game and what you continue to give to the game, man. That's that's what it's all about here at Raw Sports Legends Week. All right, for sure. Sounds good, man. All right. Hey, so we're gonna get right into it. All right, cool. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So um uh, before we get into the interviews and you know, get get into you telling your story, um just I have a little segment I call Ten awesome. Random Questions. I'm gonna just shoot ten random things at you just to kind of warm us up, all right? Okay, no problem. All right. So, um, you you an '80s guy. You know, grew up in the '80s, like like myself. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's your what was your favorite cartoon growing up in the '80s? Uh, Flintstones. Flintstones. <laughs> yes. No for doubt. Sure. No doubt. For sure. Um, when you were coming up, you know, everybody would you know shoot shoot, shoot you know piece of paper in the trash can, and you know Jordan, you know Larry, whoever, who who was one of your favorite NBA players growing up? You know, who was kind of inspired you? Uh. I would say Isaiah Thomas and Maurice Sheeks, but I would say more Isaiah Thomas when I was Got you. Got you. Um, throughout your career at any level, I mean, summer league, high school, college, pros, um, uh -huh. what's the most points that you remember scoring in the game? And then, you know, since you were a guard, the most assists you remember possibly uh, putting in the, in the stat sheet? Uh, I would say, uh, so when I was in the CBA, I had like a Shaq moment where like David Robinson, I guess, well, I needed to win the scoring title. Uh -huh. So I had a lot of buckets that game, probably like 58. Wow. Like that. <laughs> wow. Like to, to try to get the scoring title at the end. So I no, needed no. probably like, I think I needed like 30 something, 40. But then I just kept going. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was like the last game of the regular season. No doubt. No doubt. And what, what about assists? What about assists uh, throughout your career, you think? So in college, <laughs> I had. 18, 19 assists in college. Wow. So I did that. I had 17 in one game, 18 in another game. Uh, not sure the, the most. I, I, maybe that's it. Maybe that's Got you. It. Got you. Um, coming up in the Philly area, um, you know, who was, who was a player either in your era or in your class or just somebody, you know, a couple of years prior to you that you may have, you know, kind of looked up to, admired his game, and, you know, somebody that you really, really dug back then? Well, you know, I'm from North Philly. So, mm -hmm. you know, we had the Pooh Richardsons and guys like that, obviously older than me, but were very good when I was young going to watch people play. But the guy that I actually, like, I just, I, I fell in love with his game and the way he was, was Randy Woods. Gotcha. He's like a few years older than me, but like I loved his game. Mm -hmm. I used to actually go outside he used to shoot free throws where he would shoot free throws and then he would do it again. 
So he would shoot the free throw, follow through, and then follow through. That again. same motion. I've seen that. He would, he would do it again. He would shoot it, follow through, and then follow through again really quick. I started doing that. <laughs> I, I, I love, yeah, I love Randy Wood's game. And then I got to meet him, you know, as I got older, and it was, it was, it was great. You know what I mean? But I, I really like used to love his game. That's what's up. I appreciate that story, man. That, that's pretty dope. Uh, all right. So, so what year did you graduate? Was it 93, 90? Yeah, so I, I did a prep year, so I finished in 93. Okay, got you. Yes. So of your era, whether it's, you know, 92, 93, if you had to go back in time <clears throat> and pull five players, including yourself, like an all-star five, including yourself from the Philly area, to go against uh, an all-star five in PA from today, who would you pull up with you, including yourself? Uh, I would probably go Rashid Wallace. I would say... Myself, Alvin Williams, Katino Mobley, and at the four, uh, I would probably is a toss up. I would probably go me, Alvin, and Katino going to do the scoring. She going to score, so I would probably go with Ty Weeks, Ty my Weeks. high school teammate. I would, I would probably, I would probably say Ty Weeks because. He's going to get all the rebounds. He's going to play D. He's going to finish. <laughs> but he's not going to need the ball as much. There's other guys that I can name, but we already got me, Rashid, <laughs> Alvin, and Katino. So <laughs> we probably don't need too many guys that's you know, no what I mean, that's with the ball. No doubt. Um, what are some other sports that you uh, – did you play any other sports coming up besides basketball? So I played baseball when I was at uh, – when I was that, – actually, that's my favorite sport. Oh, wow. Any sport is baseball. So wow. I played that as a youth, and then I played one year at Franklin Learning Center. Wow. So, so yeah. had, just imagine if, you know, basketball wouldn't have been, like, your main focus. Do you think that you could have put enough energy into baseball and making, you know, make, making something happen there? Well, I mean, I'm not sure. I know I was pretty good, <laughs> mm -hmm. but my, uh, my, uh, my prep school coach at Maine Central, Max Good, said, you're not up here. For uh, for baseball, <laughs> no so doubt. Cut that short. Soon as I got up there, He's yeah, like, yeah. Look, your twelfth grade year will not be with uh, with baseball. So I know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, were you were you paying attention to to the last dance series? You know, with the Bulls and everything. Yeah, I mean, I was a big. You know, I'm a, a lifelong Lakers fan. Okay. But obviously, Michael Jordan is my favorite player. So you know, yeah, he. Yeah. Uh, those times where you know when we were coming up, you're trying to make a name for yourself. And, you know, uh, you know, you went to those games. I had a chance to go to, I think maybe one game in Philadelphia, but I actually got to see Michael Jordan when I was in college. Okay. Uh, at UNC Charlotte, and mm -hmm. we got to, uh, I got to see those guys play. And I was amazed and amazed how big they were. Yes. Like, like Scotty Pippen, <laughs> six eight long arms. You yes. know, jersey hugging his chest. Like, yes. He was just big. So yes. I was like, wow, yes. like, damn, this is what we got to look forward to. Exactly. We're going to try to make it, you know what I mean? It was, was something that you um thought was interesting or something brand new that you may have learned from, from that last dance series? Something well, kind of I'm, a big, I'm a big historian of the game, mm -hmm. and I'm a big Michael Jordan fan. So I kind of knew a lot of that stuff, but uh -huh. I, uh, some of the things that Phil Jackson did, you know, with the Vegas trips and things like that, you know, he kind of – Coach Phil Jackson coaches with a uh, he he's a field coach. Everything isn't X's and O's. Uh -huh. He has a really good feel for the game. So you. you know that's something that you know because I kind of I kind of I, I think that's how I coach. Uh huh. Because X's and O's is great, but you know when you played and then you played at a high level, mm -hmm. you I think you learn those things that everything is an X's and O's. Some things it's like. You know what? He's struggling, but I trust him. I'm gonna leave him in when it's probably time for him to come out. But I'm just gonna leave him in, just things like that. So, gotcha, gotcha. Um, <clears throat> you played some professional ball overseas as well, correct? Yes, yes, sir. Gotcha. Uh, of all the different countries that you may have, ex you know, uh, experienced overseas, if you had to make one of those places home, which one would it have been? You think? Italy, no doubt about it. Easy. Yeah. Yes. No Italy. doubt. What, what was what was it? What was it about Italy? I mean, just everything, just the culture, the people, the food, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of people in Italy, even though they don't always love to speak it, they, they can speak English well. That was one of the languages I picked up pretty well when I was over there and forgot so much of it now. But yeah. I definitely have, uh, 
that was a great time over there. That was definitely a great time. Got you. Um, what are your favorite sports inspired, you know, sports related movies of all time? If if you have one. Uh, I guess the sport related movies that I love was when I was coming up. Uh -huh. So kind of funny, but like, so I would guess like the fish that saved Pittsburgh because Dr. Of J course. was in Classic. it. Things like that. So that, you know, when I was young, I'm like, man, Dr. J you already was a superhero, but I'm like, damn, he can do all of this too. So it was, it was <laughs> Yes, and this, it's interesting. This generation has no idea about that. Nah, if you're nah. watching this right now, um, Google, YouTube, The Fish That Saved Pittsburgh. They would laugh. Dr. Dre, classic. They would definitely laugh. Classic. <laughs> they would definitely laugh. Um, one more thing. Um, one more question. Um, favorite wrestler growing up uh, in the 80s? Everybody watched wrestling. Everybody watched wrestling. WWF, NWA. Who was one of their favorite wrestlers? So my favorite wrestler was Hawk from the Road Warriors. Gotcha. Those were my favorite I had my mom take me there on my birthday. July 1st was my birthday. And I don't know if you remember, but they used to have a thing called the Great American Bash. A hundred percent. I remember that. So yes, yes. My, my mom took me to that on my birthday to see the Road Warriors who were, who wow. were, who were going. So, And Whoa. I love Animal was good, but I loved Hawk. On, on the road wars. Yo, legendary, dog. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and I was people, telling people somebody else. Some of these young kids that I train and coach are looking at me like, what? Like, who are these people? <laughs> All right. I was talking wrestling with, with, you know, some of the past guests, man. Who was just saying how, I think it was Flip Murray, like, how uh, WWF and NWA was like night and day. NWA was right. just grimy, and it was like right. a whole different world over there with Dusty Rhodes and, right. and, and you know, it, it was it was four horsemen. It was different over there. <laughs> right, it was for sure, <laughs> no doubt. Hey, well, um, let's get into it, man. Um, one of the things that I like to do uh, with the, you know with individuals like yourself, with the legends who who have a, a legacy and a story to tell, I don't want to get in your way of telling your story. So I'm gonna just give you the freedom and the respect to just talk and tell your story, man. And and I'll interject. I have questions, obviously, but I'll. I'll interject along the way, but um, just start us off, man, by just you know reintroducing yourself to the people and just um, you know, uh, helping us to understand and starting us off with um, you know, where the Sean Colson story began, man. So, you know, I'm a uh, guy just like a lot of these guys that's trying to you know do some big things in sports, not just basketball. From North Philly, you know, uh, grew up. My mom and my grandmother basically raised me, and uh, didn't have a father in my life. So my uncles and people like that, you know, we all lived in the same house. And I just started playing basketball since I was a little kid and I always wanted to make it. I always told my grandmother when I was three years old, I'm going to make the NBA. And, wow. you know, uh, of course, everyone says that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But yeah, I, that, that was my thing. And growing up, all I did, I was the only child. So okay. All I did was play basketball and baseball. And yes. a lot of times by myself. Mm -hmm. I lived across the street from a schoolyard. Okay. So I had the opportunity to just play and play and play and play and play. You know, like I said, I told you baseball is my favorite sport. I really used to throw the ball off the wall, and I would just <laughs> play a game. Like, that's how I actually learned how to play both sports. I would just play a game of the Phillies against, you know, the Montreal Expos. And just, just in your imagination. Yes, and just play the whole game. I would wow. look in the news. I was a big newspaper kid. Uh -huh. so I would get a newspaper and I would look and see, uh, the Sixers play the Bucks tonight. So I would go out there and I would play the Sixers, hey, against you know City Moncrief has the ball, he throws it to Marcus Johnson and he scores or he gets fouled. And I would just play the whole game and mm -hmm. I would do that every game. Yeah, I would, I would do that every every day. Every day I would do that would be my routine. So you know I missed out a lot. With, you know, spending the night over, you know, people's houses, all the things that us young kids do. I didn't really do that. I really was just a, to myself, just a, you know, basketball, 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 basketball. So, you know, that was how I grew up. And uh, that was that was pretty much it. You know, I, I, my, my childhood was kind of simple. We wasn't, we wasn't rich. We wasn't super poor. We were just regular, basically. Yeah. No so, you know what I mean? We were just regular. And we, you know, had to, we, we, I, I had a good childhood, you know what I mean? I uh, had a lot of creativity because I was the only child. Uh -huh. So then um, I actually started going off. People would heard about me that I could play. Okay. A guy named, a guy named, I always like to give him credit, a guy named Wasul Crawford uh, got me off. I like, asked my mom, could I leave, you know, the neighborhood to go play basketball? 
Uh -huh. I played for him uh, a couple leagues, and I ended up playing down like uh, 25th and was that uh, uh, not even more than center, uh, direct center, 26th and master. Uh -huh. Playing down there with a guy named uh, Big uh, Fat Alonzo. So everybody knows these people my era. So Got you. played with all those guys and, uh, you know, just start trying to get a name. Played at the Pow. Played at the Pow for uh, uh, Brother Muhammad. And, you know, just, just a lot of great people in my life who, you know, um, got me started with basketball. And I mean, when I say started, not just my on-the-block days, like, gotcha. you know, playing in leagues and stuff like that. So, you know, and I, I guess I was pretty good and got a little name and, you know, went from there. Just curious, what, what 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 do you think they were seeing in you then? Like, did they see your potential? I mean, or were you just like, did you did you stand out at that point? Or were you just kind of, did you blend in with all the other players or what? So back then, I felt like I was really good. But I felt like uh, I was a really good passer. And you know, okay. passing is great. I love getting a lot of assists, things like that. But you get a bigger name off scoring. So it was other guys who... You know, maybe I didn't even think necessarily was better than me when I was coming up, mm -hmm. but they scored a lot. So, gotcha. you know, that's how they got the name. Well, I was kind of known as I can score, yeah. but I was really good at getting everybody else the ball and things like that. So, mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. At what point did you, like, like fall in love, love with basketball, where it's like, you know what, it's a two-part question. When did you fall in love, love with it? And then would you, when did you start to really realize, hey, I'm pretty good, like, I'm becoming a little bit better than some of my peers around me from what people are telling me or just based on what I know. So when I was a little kid, I just loved basketball. Like, gotcha. I love baseball, too. Actually, I would say I love baseball more. Oh, wow. Time. Maybe still now. Okay. Like, I just I just love baseball, but I always loved basketball. I yeah. always, that was just the, I'm watching it on TV, I'm playing it, I'm thinking about it. And it's, uh -huh. it's like that now. Yeah. It's like that now, like, you know, I think of, you know, obviously I'm a trainer. I'm all around the country training, you know, from NBA to, to young kids. Mm -hmm. But I just think of drills. Like, yeah. I, I'm like creative. I don't have to go on YouTube and uh -huh. you know, copy what somebody else is doing. Not that anything's wrong with that. But, like, I don't have to do that because I have a vivid imagination. I just want, you know, I just think of basketball. I just really, yeah. I, I love basketball. And, you know, uh. I felt like I was good when I was younger, but I made like a uh, like a half court shot that I was known for, like to win a championship, like a league. Gotcha. And people started. It's crazy. I played a good game, but I like two seconds left, and like they called. We called timeout. They made a bucket. It was like two seconds left. We called timeout. Just like look, get it in, and and they threw it to me, and I shot it and just threw it, uh -huh. and it went in. Gotcha. And my name got bigger from that. Gotcha. From that game, we beat like a really good team. And I was like, I was like ten, twelve. So I was gotcha. probably like eleven, twelve years old. Gotcha. And that's when I start really getting like a name for basketball. Gotcha, gotcha. Tell one one of the things that are different these days, um, opposed to back then, the era we're talking about is, uh, you know, nowadays everything's AAU and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Back then, you know, summer leagues were dominant. You know, guys. You know, played. It was more playground ball, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, take me back. Take us back to uh some of those summer league uh, memories, man. Some of the leagues you played in. Some of your most memorable summer league experiences, like you know, six team Susquehanna, play all that kind of stuff, man. Take us back there, man. So, you know, the leagues, man, Philadelphia back then were. I mean, they just were good, man. Let Let me start first before I even played up six team in Susquehanna. So I used to go and watch. Mm -hmm. And I tell people this story all the time. I never saw nobody dominate grown people like Hank Gathers used to do up 16th at Susquehanna. Wow. Like, I would go up there and be like, well, damn, Lionel Simmons. Like, a lot of, you know, great players was up 16th. All the guys I looked up to. Doug Oates, like, everybody played up there. He and you seen, like, you, seen them all, you seen them all playing up there? Yeah, everybody. Everybody playing. Everybody that was good. But he was up there like he was playing against kids. He was playing <laughs> hard dunking everything, rebound. Like, he literally would make plays where, like, he played defense on one end, get the rebound, outlet to somebody, somebody go down, and he beat a drop-off person, dunk it. They go down, <laughs> somebody shoot, he get the rebound, throw it to somebody, they go down, shoot, he get the offensive rebound, dribble, pump, fake, go on the other side, dunk it. Like, dang, like every – it was just, like, crazy. Like, well, wait, all these guys is in college and 
NBA, like they top players, and he just out here, I mean, destroying. So that was that was a big thing when I used to go up 16th Street. You, you know, if you're not tall enough, you're on the gates. Yeah, watching all those guys, man, it was just it was just incredible. So those days, and that was like the Phillies version of like what people know nationally as like the Rucker Park kind of feel. You know, it's like Phillies version of that. Yeah, Yeah, it was was incredible. (laughs) It was it was incredible. So you know that was that was what I came up on. Uh huh. And then when I got to play, you know, I um, I I did I did pretty well. Those leagues uh start playing up the Hank. Actually, it was called the Moreland Center then. Mm-hmm. All the top players, you know, you played against guys that you looked up to, guys that, you know, not even necessarily that you looked up to that was just better than you. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You was trying to get to their level. So, you know, Philly had a, you know, when I was coming up, a lot of good players, man, whether it was, you know, street ball players. You know, those guys are older than me, but, like, you know, the uh, the hot rides and, mm-hmm. you know, the, the you know, and then school guys like LeVan Austin, the, the – um, the uh, Jerome Allen's, like, mm-hmm. you know, it just really just got a lot of good players, man. Mm-hmm. And even just the high school guys, of, you know, that was really good. Like, uh, you know, people wouldn't know, but Maya, like the Tyrone Masons, like, there's a lot of good players just everywhere in the city just came up there, whether, like I said, whether it was street, whether it was college, whether it was high school, and, you know, or just semi-pros, whatever, just really good players. So, you know, you had to, you had to, um, you had to learn and really, you know, earn your stripes. You know what I mean? Nowadays, uh-huh. it's given a little bit more. Different yeah. times. Different times. But uh-huh. then it was, you know, it really, you know, it wasn't a lot of picking you up or, you know, somebody scoring you and, yo, that's my bro. And, that, like, it just wasn't like that back then. <laughs> Not to say that it's, you know, that's better or worse. Uh-huh. It just wasn't like that. You know what yeah. I mean? It just, it just wasn't like that. So, you know, you really had to earn your stripes. If you was good. You know, you really was good because everybody was saying it. Like, you, you know, you can't just be good. You from North Philly and North Philly people saying you're good. Gotcha. It had to be the people out Southwest and South Philly and <laughs> West Philly screaming your name. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So, you know, and, and, and that and, was and, you know, because. And, and, you know, and, you know, sorry to cut you off, but, you know, this was before uh, social media yes, and YouTube yes, where, where, yes. where somebody get dunked on, somebody get crossed over. It's, 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 it's this kid getting it down right. the park. Word travels instantly. Right. But at, back then, it was word of mouth. You, you had to, you from North Philly, then you go back to South, you know, back back to your area. You'd be like, yo, I seen this ball tonight. Da, da, da. So the word traveled that way, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, more, and that era, I, I can say it. It was more haters. We, we were <laughs> haters back. And I, when I say haters, we didn't. All right, he pretty good. I heard he pretty good. He gonna have to show it tonight. I don't care nothing about <laughs> how good such and such from South Philly or this. We just didn't care about that. Where now, you know, I coach high school. I've coached AAU. I train a lot. Of people. You hear that? They like, yo, who coming to the gym today? Like, why do you care? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, we about to put this work in. Who cares? Yeah, I don't care what everybody's saying. Oh, I saw this YouTube clip. We gonna see what he got tonight. Yeah. So it's just, it's just different now. You know what I, I mean? remember, I vividly remember, like, great players getting heckled. Like, some of the right. best players. It'd be a little section. He'd be taking the ball out. Dudes on his heels, heckling him. You know what I'm saying? Until he do something great, and then he earned their respect. <laughs> Listen, you go down South Philly, you play against Rashid Bay or, or Kevin Slaughter. Guys don't care nothing about showing coach. And they know I'm good. <laughs> they know I'm real good. Yeah. They know Alvin Williams real good. But that day... <laughs> they don't care about nothing. And they these might be guys that actually rooted for you. Down yeah. Sunny Hill or other places. Or might tell somebody like, yo, Sean Coach, he's tough. Or this person is tough. But when <laughs> when they when you played, it was like, all right, you gotta be good today. It don't matter about <laughs> you was good last week or you know, yeah, you know, three weeks ago. Like, are you good today? And that's what they cared about, you know what I mean? I love it. I love it. Yeah, right. I mean, and it, it, you know, it brought toughness out to you. Like, even the best. I've seen, you know, everyone on earth knows Sad Eye. Oh, and I've been in the crowd where they like, you know, they about to play Joe Jefferson or, you know, I don't want to mess up some of the names, some of the guys that played against them. And they was like, all right, like, let, let me see what Sad got tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I yeah. was coming down there like, look, it's whatever. Like, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> You had, to, you had to show and prove all the time. All which the time. I think made for really good players, though, because you really couldn't relax. There's no yeah. time to rest on your laurels and say, 
you know, I've gotten MVPs a lot of places. Uh -huh. But they didn't care about that. Like, yep. what are you going to do today? Like, That's today. right. <laughs> hey, what is, what is, when you think about um, whether it's 16th Street or, or any other, you know, summer leagues you played in, what are some of your most memorable experiences that you think guys still talk about today? Like, yo, you remember that one time, this to that, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I was on, I was on, you know, when I first started playing on 16th Street, I was doing good. My team was like, okay, we were pretty good. Okay. We weren't, we weren't a, you know, final four championship type team. We were just, okay. you know, I was getting a, getting on the team. And I was doing pretty good, but it wasn't something where it's like, you know, I'm in the championship or nothing like that. Okay. But, so, you know, you're watching guys and, you know, you had a few battles. But I remember once I still started getting on good teams and I won, okay. you know, I won one championship down there, got two MVPs. But I actually remember the one that we lost we played Jerome Allen, and um, we played uh, – I forgot some of the other players that they had, but they had a really good team. I want to say they even lost, may have lost in the championship, but they had a really good team. But mm -hmm. obviously, Jerome Allen was the main player. And me and him were going against each other. And, uh, you know, that was a big thing because, you know, Poole was really good, like I said, a couple years older than me, but, you know, was always a good player. Yeah. And had a big name everywhere. You know, That's right. Jerome Poole Allen. So – you know, I remember that. You know, we didn't always guard each other, but that was kind of like the match. I was the best player on our team. He was the mm -hmm. best player on their team. So, you know, we got it in. And I remember people talking about it. they beat us two games to one in that, in that, but it was, <laughs> you know, it was packed. A lot of Germantown, uptown people, and then North Philly. So it was off the hook. Like them games was like really like incredible up there. So, you know, no, I remember God. I remember that series where we went against them and we actually lost, like I said, but I remember me really, really doing well. You know, I, mean, yeah. I think I, I want to say I won MVP of that season, but we lost in the championship. Now, I yeah. felt good about that, though, that, you know, I did well, you know, that season and the playoffs championship, but we lost. It was gotcha. over, we lost. Gotcha. So. Did, um, for the younger generation watching this right now, describe your game. What type of player were you back then? What were some of your strengths, things, things that you think you did well? Uh, You know, my game developed. <laughs> it it kind of grew. Like, so – I was in high school, I averaged 17 points, but I averaged 10 assists in, okay. in high school. Wow, average 17 10. points. And, but I had Tyrone Weeks, All-American. I had Ferran Meatball Hand, <laughs> you know, uh, honorable mention in the All-American. Like, we, we, we had really good team. We were number three in the country wow. my junior year. Wow. So, you know, I could score, but, you know, I really, like I said, always was a person that got people the ball. Gotcha. Then I went to, and you know, in the leagues, you kind of got to score more, mm -hmm. depending on what team you are. I feel like I was a person that whatever the whatever what was needed. You need a 30, I can get that. But if you need it, you know, to get everybody the ball, I can play on a team like that. Then you get older. I went to high school. I mean, I went to college. I was number three in the country in assists. I averaged eight assists a game, right? Wow. So wow. my senior year, I averaged eight assists a game. I had 231 assists in one season, right? Wow. I averaged 16 points a game. So I kind of was always a both. I always loved doing both. Gotcha. As a professional, uh, I, I, came, I became more of a scorer, but I always liked to pass. So if you look, okay. you'll look in leagues, you know, especially more, you know, my NBA career, I wasn't scoring a whole lot, obviously playing behind Steve Francis and things like that. But when I played overseas, you look, you will always see, oh, he averaged 30. He averaged uh -huh. 27. You know, I led a lot of leagues in scoring. Got but it. I let him in assists too. So wow. I averaged, you know, 30 and 7, 21 and 9. So, you know what I mean? Like, I, 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 I was, I'm one of the only people that I led the league in scoring and assists mm -hmm. in France and in Italy. Wow. So, you know what I mean? But I, I love scoring. But I love getting everybody the ball. I just – that's just – because I think when you're a point guard, the biggest compliment is, like, now, I'm done, obviously. I don't never play basketball. <laughs> I'm working out working out guys and things like that. But I don't – I haven't played up and down not like that in a few years, right? Because gotcha. I just don't love it to play it anymore like that. I understand. So guys will see me or they talking about me on Facebook or Instagram or just conversations. They say, I like – I love playing with him. 
when I ran the court, he going to always get me layups and open shots. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's the biggest compliment. The scoring, that's what I did. Uh -huh. But I love that other people enjoyed playing with me. You know what I mean? Like, man, I just love playing with that guy because he used to make it easy for me. Of course. So, of so course. that was really my game. That's what's up. Hey, real quick, want to take a second to shout out another legend in the building, man. My man, Rashid Brookenboro. Uh, uh, he, she said uh, the first time he saw Sean Colson was a PAL tournament in Florida. Uh, he said he was in eighth grade. He was some. You were someone that he looked up to, and you was major. Salute. That's my guy. Listen, so I played for a guy named Brother Leon. Brother Leon Shamsuddin, right? And um, she ended up playing after me for the same person. Okay. So I met him. I met him through then, and he told me that. Said, man, I love your game. You just a, you just a thorough dude. You know what I mean? You humble. Blah 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 blah. And we just got really cool from then. And then obviously he done major things basketball sure. and just you know some people when you see them it's just always a good look. It's never uh -huh. you know what I mean? It's it's never nothing but love. So, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I appreciate him saying that. But like Rashid Brookenborough is obviously a great player, but a good dude. You know what yes. I mean? You always can't say that about everybody. Uh -huh. But like, he is really a good dude. So you know, I mean, I appreciate him. I appreciate him saying anything good about me. So. No doubt. That's what's up, man. So hey, take us back. Take me through your high school journey. Um, where take me to, from from start to finish, and just you know any memorable experiences, big games, big rivalries, players you went up against. Um, just anything. So my high school career was, you know, messed up kind of, and partly me. That's, mm -hmm. why I could, that's why I feel like, you know, I can always talk to these kids. Uh -huh. so they, but they see me now. Oh, man, I seen you training Steph Curry before. I seen you doing this. You got all these guys that you trained. You played in the league. This, that, the other. You did good in college. You did good in high. But people don't realize, you know, I was a knucklehead in school. Wow. You know, uh, when, I, when I was in high school. Didn't mm -hmm. do right didn't play, was more worried about, like, just being in the streets, but not really, like, doing nothing illegal, really, stuff like that, just not wanting to conform, not wanting to just, you know, do the right things. I don't want to go to practice. I don't feel like doing all that. Like, I just want – so that's why – so you know, it sounds like it sounds like you say like you wasn't a hundred percent all in. All no, in, in this I direction. love ball. I love you, ball. You were still kind of on the fence all, still. I just didn't want to do all the all the stuff that was necessary all the time. You know what I mean? So I was at Franklin Learning Center. They didn't win ninth grade. Then I left, got put out, went to Bartram, watched Franklin Learning Center and Grats play again. Didn't play at Bartram. Because wait, wait, wait. So, so here I'm, I'm trying to follow this. So you was at FLC. Yes. And and, and, and you got put out of there. Yes. Got you. Yes. And went to went to Bartram because they used my my mom got a new job and they just used my mom address. So now wow. I'm all the way out southwest. I don't know nobody out southwest Philly. I don't know nobody out there. So right. I start. Uh, knew, end up knowing a couple of people that threw ball, like Jamal Redman, who went to Gratz. Uh, my man, uh, Tory, Tory. Uh, so um, you know, his, his, his Tory Harrison, his uh, son Zari is doing big things. Uh -huh. But they they went to West Philly, uh, Lawrence Pembroke, all those guys. So I would you know hang around those guys because I knew them through ball outside West. But I really didn't know a lot of people out there. Gotcha. Didn't, didn't that didn't go well. So then I decided I saw Franklin Learning Center lose the grats for the second year in a row. Uh huh. So I was like, you know what? I got to get myself together. Yeah. So I was going to, uh, you know, me and Rashid is really tight. So I was going to go to grats. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to grats and just lock in and do what I'm supposed to do. And what, what, what grade or, or what, what, around what grade was this for you? So this is going into 12. This is going into 12. So I, uh, I was supposed to go there, and I don't go. Uh, no, Mr. L said, I don't want you to play for us during the summer, and then you change your mind or something happened, so you can't play. I want you to come, but, you know, if you come, you come, but I'm not – I don't want you playing for us or nothing like that. So whole season go by, whole summer go by. I'm telling everybody, she, you know, all the guys that I know over there, and everybody knows I'm going. And then <laughs> – the day that school starts, this is a true story. Wow. I'm back with my grandmother. I'm down north. 
I go to Broughton, it was Columbia then, Cecil B. Moore now, and I can go take the train to go north up to Grants, obviously, Airy, Huntington Park. Or I can go the other way to go downtown to Fairmount. And I, it wasn't a plan enough. I had my uh, transcript papers that I had from Marshall, and I went to Franklin Center. And I just I just decided that day, like, you know what? I really, they, you know, Grats always good. Franklin Learners is always good. But I was like, I want to be the difference. I go there. They got people. I'm going to be sharing the show. And if I go here, if I can make this work, if they let me back in, I, it, you know, it probably will be my show. You yeah. know, they got a real good team, but they don't really have guards. So I went, talked to the guidance counselor who I was cool with. He's like, man, you know, you got to uh, talk to the vice principal. We'll push you out. <laughs> had a conversation with him. Have the whole weird like, process and all? No, no, no. But I didn't even know if he was going to let me because he was the one who put me out. Wow. And then he said, uh, you know what? He said, you think you can help us beat Grants? Everybody <laughs> says you're, you're, really, you're really good now. I said, like, yes. And and he let me back in. That Whoa. Was that was it. <laughs> he let me back in. And then, Yo, that's crazy. That, but, that, but, but on the flip side, you could have been going to Simon Grants, though. Yes, yes. I was supposed to go the whole summer. Yeah, everything. It was going to be crazy. And you would, at that time, just put in perspective for the your younger generation watching, you could have been playing with who if you would have went to Grants? It would have been Rashi Wallace. It would have been um, Sean Smith, Sean Red Smith. So that was like the 93 squad. 92. 92 squad. It would have been uh, Contrell Scott. They had, a, they had a team. It would have wow. been Terrell Stokes. That was Terrell Stokes. Ninth of grade year, tenth grade year, whatever it was. So they had wow. a squad. But, you know, I just wanted to do my own thing. I felt like that would be better. And just familiar surroundings, if, if I could make it happen. Uh -huh. yeah. So so I'm just trying to just trying to put the timeline together. So your ninth grade year, did you play anywhere, yes or no? No, nothing. All right. Tenth grade year, did you play anywhere, yes or no? Nothing. <laughs> Eleventh grade year, did you play anywhere, yes or no? Nothing. Zero. Nothing. <laughs> How? Wait a minute. Before we go forward, just help me to understand this. So, okay. The end result is you're playing pro ball and this and that. But you didn't play anywhere your your, your first three years. You loved yeah. basketball. So what was really – I mean, you said you was messing up and you was all over the place. This had a chance – you had a chance of this not happening at all because yeah. time was ticking. I mean, that's why – listen, that's why I'm the perfect person for all these kids when I come at them because I was a jackass. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't a bad kid. Yeah. I just want to do what I want. I wasn't yeah. never, the difference with me, never disrespectful. Like, uh -huh. you know, I just was like, I don't want to do all this practicing, all this schoolwork. I don't want to do, like, I just didn't want to do all that stuff. And I was just trying to do something that I wanted to do. You know what yeah. I mean? Trying to be something I'm not just, you know, I just, I just wasn't focused like that. I love ball, but I just didn't want to do everything that I need to do to play ball on the school level. So how were you? How were you keeping yourself into like you was obviously like those? Oh those, yeah, I played in the. You were still balling, the, still wrestling. Yeah, I was always playing in the okay. gym, in leagues, like and everybody knew me and knew how good yeah. I was. Actually, they would say I was a, I was a, uh, I was a waste. Yeah, I was just a waste. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Yeah. So 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 help me to understand this senior year and did you? I'm gonna let you tell it, but at, okay, talk about your senior year, but talk about the point in your mind. If, if it even happened during your high school days, that you had that shift where you said, you know what, I'm all in. I, I got to change things because I really like this. Like, at what point did you stop being a jack A and just shift and say, you know, I want to do this? Or, so, or, or did, it, did it not happen then? So I went in the locker room down McGonagall Hall when Gratz beat Frank Alernis in the second year in a row. Mm -hmm. And when I went in there, they, uh, you know, you guys, tears. You know I mean? That was two years in a row they had lost. Mm -hmm. I was over at, still at, I was over at Barton, but you know, they played was that March or whatever, March the first or whatever it was. Uh -huh. And um they they were crying, all those guys. I was like, the, FL, the FLC guys. Yes. So I'm saying good game because the year before they lost by like twenty, they played two years in a row in the championship. And then the second year they didn't lose by it was a close game, good game. So when they lost, I'll go in there and say, Oh man, you know, y'all my homies that and they was like, man, if you don't get out of here, like, you could be helping us, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they was like, man, we don't want to hear that. Like, I'm You in the crowd. Say, you could be in yeah. here with us. Yeah, for Ryan Meatball Hand, like, he really was just like, you know, I was really cool with me and still is to this day. But he was like, man, if you don't get out of here, basically. And I was like, damn. And when I left, 
you know, I was like, damn, they suckers. Like, why are they acting like that? But then I was like, damn, like, they really, they really want, you know what I mean? They just really. So that was a big thing. And then the other, the other big thing was I was at a corner store hanging out there, not doing what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And she lived close to me. Rushy Wallace? And, yes. And him and Miss Jackie, his mom, came to like a Chinese store to get something to eat. So I see both of them. And we talking, and she barely says anything. I'm just like, what, like, what is going on, Miss Jackie? And she came out. I'm like, yo, what's up with your mom? He's like, I don't know, man. She probably just, you know, she don't like that you out here. I'm like, why are you out here? And when she walked back past, they got something or whatever and came back out. He stayed in and went out and got something. Then they both walked out. I was like, I was like, all right, boy. He's like, hit me. And then she looked and she said, you know what? I'm so disappointed in you. And she bounced. She just kept walking. I was like, dang, mom. And those two things was the ones I was like, oh, I gotta get it together. Like I'm too, I'm a good player. I think I could be something. And I'm I'm playing myself. So how did yeah. you in, 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 how did you internalize that? Because it seems like you still remember it like it happened yesterday. Yeah, I mean my if my homie's saying it, yeah, you know, other people have said that. Well, it's like Miss Jackie. Miss Jackie was like a lot of people will tell you that Alvin, I'm quite sure he told you a lot. Like Miss Jackie, she ain't by mom. You know, I mean, all of us anyway. So I was like, uh, and you know, we had a really good relationship. So I'm like, you know, his brother I had a relationship with. So I'm like, damn, Miss Jackie is like killing me right now. <laughs> so you know that 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 definitely made an imprint on me. No doubt. So tell me tell me how, how your senior year goes after that. So the senior year, you know Well, I guess I guess your only high school basketball year. Yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a I was confident, so I always had a chip on my shoulder. And uh -huh. I always was like you know, I was better than a lot of those guys that was over there. That okay. you know, maybe they had names, a little bit more names, but it's because they played. Uh -huh. But like, if you saw me play down Sunny Hill and in all these leagues, other a lot of people thought I was better. But you know, I just didn't have that. I had the street name, but I didn't have in the you know the leagues name. But I didn't have the pub and all that type of stuff on my yeah. resume. Uh -huh. But I was confident. I was like, I told everybody, guys, that I'm you know, hang with every day right now, my friends over at, at, at Gratz, like, oh, we're going to beat them. Like, mm -hmm. I'm telling you we're going to beat I know they got Sheed and they got a good team. We're going to beat them. Gotcha. Like, we're going to beat them. All gotcha. year. All year. So, it was, you know, everybody, we played a couple mental games where, like, we had a game, they came to our game with they jackets on, that, <laughs> that they had won the championship just to watch us play. Like, they walked in and the whole crowd was like, Oh God, she like and, like rock man, stars. The whole team came out. I'm like, damn, that's how they doing it. And like, was that like a like a mental thing for you? Right, like, <laughs> right. So you know, we won, we won the game that they came to, <laughs> and then we did it. We went to their game. Now we didn't have any jackets to, to, to play, but we went to their game, our whole team, and we walked in their gym like, and you know, they was talking to, oh yeah, you know, the crowd, they gonna beat y'all. Can't wait till they play y'all. So yeah. it was like, a, you know, obviously a collision course. They had played the last two years. And then, uh, you know, we played them. We played them and we beat them in the Did championship. We beat them 63 to 50. We beat them by 13. Was that regular season or the championship? No, that was the chip. Down oh, there, oh, chip. The wow. Yes. And, uh, you know, we finished number three in the country that year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the best part about it is, you know, I hung with guys from Grants, like, still to this day now. But I was able to really tell, like, I told y'all, I told y'all. <laughs> and it was, you know, mad. Oh, okay, y'all got one, so what? And I was like, you know, we did it because I was there. You know what I mean? Two years, <laughs> I wasn't there. You know, we, we we lost. And when I was there, I told y'all. So, you know, that was a big deal, you know what I mean, that we beat them. And then, you know, the next year, I was in prep school. Okay. Yeah. Hey, here, here, before you talk about that real quick, okay. what was some, during that year, what were some other um, either memorable experiences, other, other big games you had, you know, some other big uh, big names you went against back then? So, I mean, back then it was, like I said, Kevin Slaughter at, at, uh, at, at Washington. We had uh, Jeff Myers, who was really good at South Philly. They had us on the ropes. I was like one of the only games during the city that they had us on the ropes. And, you know, our, our actually the lights went out. They were wow. up a couple points with like four or five minutes left. And the lights came back on, and then we went back and beat them. 
You know what I mean? We came back and we beat them. Uh, we played. Uh, we played. Uh, we played West Philly. And uh, I was really good friends with those guys. They had Joe Newton and Devin Baker and all those guys. And we, you know, we really beat them really good. One of my best friends, Jason Lawson, we played them at Island. I don't need no doubt. And I know he might, he might be looking right now. We bombed them. Uh, <laughs> we bombed Ollie by a million points. And Jay was mad. And was, <laughs> we did that. Then, you know, that year, you know, we were really good. We played Roman in a okay. corner out in Altoona for the championship. Wow. Beat them by like 20 there, Mark Jackson and them. Uh, we played, obviously, we beat Oak Hill with Jeff McGinnis and all those guys. For real? In Florida, yeah. You know, the the, the, the tournament that they call the, uh, what do they call it now in, in Fort Myers? The biggest tournament down there where everybody's at. And, um, damn, it's in Fort Myers, Florida. Can't think of the name of it, but every team, the top teams in the country are down there every year. We well, somebody it. else. Um, I think Mark Jackson. When I was just uh, had had Mark Jackson on the other day, he 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 hit me to um. You know, I, I grew up in North Sound. You know, North Sound Eagle, and I know you got some family up in North Sound. Yes, um, yes. So so we were always thinking that we were always sad for the pub and and, and the Catholic League, thinking that because you know y'all wasn't in the PIAA. So right, I thought exactly. after the pub chip, y'all season was over. Right. I didn't know that y'all would go to tournaments and y'all y'all would continue to go after that. I didn't know right, that. Right, for sure. There it is. Somebody just put it on there. City, City of Palms. Palms. City of Palms, yeah. Yes. So we we beat uh, – so it's funny. We beat Oak Hill in the semifinals. They had Jeff McGinnis, all those guys. Jeff was like one of my super, super homies to this day. Wow. Uh, so, Jeff, uh, we beat those guys. And then we lost to Miami Senior. And, uh, you know, I only played a few minutes. We had like a day off in between the championship – the semifinals of the championship and went to like a little island beach type thing. And I got sick. So I really didn't play that much in the okay. championship, but whatever we lost, but I, I didn't even play 10 minutes. Okay. So we lost. And, uh, and uh, so, you know, that was a good tournament, but back then rice was in that tournament. Felipe Lopez. Felipe Kareem Reed, like they had a Kareem had a, Reed. Oh, that was yeah, Kareem yeah, Reed was yeah, a beast. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they had a they yeah. had a squad, and they lost the Miami senior with uh, Steve Edwards, who was a really top player that went to Miami, and then his brother Allen Edwards actually went to uh, Kentucky. Okay, after he was younger, but uh, we uh, you know that was a great tournament, wow. and like I said, we played Roman, we played a lot of good teams. We end up twenty five and two, twenty six and two. Who did y'all lose to? Who's on two teams? We lost to Miami Senior. Okay, yeah, you did say, yeah. And then we lost to somebody else. I can't remember who. Y'all went undefeated in, in the Philly area. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, 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 really, we really had a good team. And, you know, those guys, they had lost two years in a row. So uh -huh. they, had a, they had a chip on their shoulder as well. You know what I mean? And then you add me, you know, we had a really good, we had a really good what, team. What did that do for your mindset and your confidence? You, you played no high school ball. Two two questions I have. You played no high school ball. Then you come there, the, the, the missing piece, and you you help them get the championship. What did that do for your mind and your confidence? Well, I always thought I, I always thought I was good, and I didn't I didn't look at it as like the no high school part because I played everywhere. Everyone okay. knew who I was, so okay. it wasn't like you know they didn't know me. It was okay. really me. Just like why, why didn't mm. you play? Like you should have played. Gotcha. So you know that's how it went. But that's why I try to tell people all the time, you know, it's not how you, you know, you can get over things. You can get through things. Mm -hmm. The way you start doesn't have to be how you finish. You know what I mean? I really was on some BS. But look how it turned out. You know what I mean? No so, doubt. You know, and you just got to work hard and be focused. Another question I had about the high school thing, um, were you um, – was it any difficulty in, in transitioning, you know, to, to the high school team? Like, were you welcome with open arms from the coach? And, you know, or was it just a smooth transition? He just hit the ground running, playing ball, and that was it? I think those guys, they knew I could play because they seen me play a million times, whether it was in the school and then outside Sunny Hill. You know, everybody sees them. So everybody know they really was upset by, like, man, you should have played the year before the year gotcha, before. Gotcha, gotcha. And then I think they welcomed me because – they lost twice. Uh -huh. So, you know, they kind of just like, look, man, you can help us win. Let's get it done. You know what I mean? Yeah. We know you already. Just help us beat these dudes. You know what I mean? Grats running the city. Yeah. You know, you just, you just second. 
it just don't feel right. You know what I mean? So I'm quite sure those guys was really salty that they, you know, had to live in the shadow. You know what I mean? You're in a big shadow. Simon Gratz, Mr. Ellaby, Rashi Wallace. Before that, Aaron McKee, Harry Moore. Like that. I mean, they just ran the city for those years. So for sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, so before you talk about the prep school, um, it's, it's a few stops I want to make prior to that. Um, did you play any AAU? Did it was AAU big then, or or, or you didn't do no AAU? No, it was just no. Camp. I never no, played nothing. AAU. Nothing. What about any? Um, were you? Did you play in any camps? I know like the Nike or ABCD. That stuff was big then. None of that stuff. No, because I had to go to. I decided to actually go to summer school. That was the only time I had to go to summer school in my life. I was going to go to Five Star. It okay. was like during the time when we had summer school, so I did, I chose summer school. Okay. And then because I was, you know, not really school. You know, you yeah. get ranked now. Yeah, 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 you can yeah. get ranked off AAU and all. Of I was ranked and things like that. So yeah. So you had you to know, go on the school radar. To yeah, make yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't nobody that somebody. You know what I mean? That I was going to. I mean, I'm quite sure I could have probably played AAU, but mm -hmm. if I wasn't playing school. I definitely wasn't thinking about AU, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I definitely wasn't. I love ball. I played in leagues, played ball all the time. It was just school, you know what I mean? I wasn't, like, flunking out or failing, but I just was, like, not doing what I needed to do. Got you. What about, um? did you, after that senior season at FLC, um, and did you play up in Contra Hockey at the Donna Frio at all? Yes. Yeah. Now, I play, that's what I mean. So, I played in that. Mm -hmm. We won it before with, with, you know, me. We had me, Rashid Wallace. Alvin, um, uh, Tyrone Weeks, Jason wow. Lawson, uh, man, I can't even think of all the names. Uh, Kevin Slaughter, man, we had like we had the squad that it was. Like, was you on the Sunny Hill team up there? Yes, yes, okay, yes, yes. You, was, get, was, you wasn't getting no wins. You wasn't getting no wins against that squad. Like a uh, like Sunny Hill juniors, seniors. Or? I, I want to say juniors because we lost. We lost one year when I was there. We lost to summer. I can't think of who it was. Was it the but, Norristown area team with Larry Mayo and Harry Allen and them that she was on that team or no? I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember. Okay. But I know we lost up there. But uh -huh. when we got our team team, and I'm not even sure. I didn't, once again, now this team is different because we had Alvin Williams. We had guards that, you know, could take up the slack. Yeah. But I don't think I was, I think Kevin Slaughter always tells me this. I wasn't on the team that they lost to the year before. I okay. had something going on, whatever, and I didn't lose. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm sorry, I wasn't there when we lost. Got you. But the year when everybody was there and we came up, like, you wasn't. That was the <laughs> same year. We were in the Sunny Hill College League, uh -huh. but we were juniors, mm -hmm. and we were 8-0 in that league. Wow. wow. And then something happened, and Sunny Hill <laughs> stopped the whole league. Stopped wow. the whole – something happened and he stopped the whole league. And we was like 8-0, and beating everybody, all the college guys, everybody. We had that – basically like the same team, just all all, all guys that were juniors going to be seniors, and they were all – we were all on the same team. We had a really good team. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, well, this is um, um a good time for us to take a quick break. Um, I forgot to tell you at the top of the hour, Instagram only gives us an hour in like uh, hour segments to talk. Okay. So uh, we're coming up. I'm going to see a little countdown on my screen of the first hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this one, um, save it to my to my little story there, and then and then um, just, just rejoin me in a, in a minute, and we're going to pick up right here. We're going to pick up okay. right here where we left off. All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll see you in a second. Yep. All right. What's the deal, y'all? It's your boy, Big Star Raw Sports Legends Week Part 2 with my man, Sean Colson. Um, if you missed the first hour, man, I mean, classic stories, man. You know, uh, just like all the, the rest of the, um, you know, previous legends, a great storyteller, um, tons of experiences that he's, uh, you know, given up here for the people, man. I'm sure some of these things uh, you're hearing for the very first time, man. We got my man, Sean Colson, um, FLC, Franklin Learning Center, um, played alongside, you know, uh, Tyrone Weeks, and others, um, he just got done talking about the uh, Donna Frio Classic experience. Um, and uh, also, um, you know, some other stuff. Uh, he mentioned uh, Sunny Hill. Uh, he was playing in the league there. And um, classic stories, man. So uh, we're going to get my man Sean Colson back on. And we're going to, um, you know, have, our, have part two of Legends Week with my man Sean Colson. And make sure y'all come back tomorrow. Um, it's... Uh, it's uh, the uh, season, I'm sorry, the, the, the grand finale of week three of Legends Week. Uh, I'm going to have my man Donnie Carr on. 
um, Roman Catholic legend, uh, assistant coach at LaSalle University currently, my man Donnie Carr. Um, it's, it's definitely, definitely going to be a, a classic way to finish up Legends Week. Um, so going to my man um, Sean Colson back on, man. We're going to continue the classic conversation. And um, if you missed the first hour, make sure you log on to the website, uh, rawsports.tv or um, the YouTube channel, Raw Sports Films. And I'll have this entire interview um, posted up later on tonight or, or sometime tomorrow. Uh, get my man Sean Colson on. Keith, I see you, Playboy. Appreciate you tuning in, big dog. Hey, Coles, um, I'm not sure why it's saying that you're unable to join again like it did the first time. All right, here we go. All right, we back. Hour two. Yes, sir. You had just left off. You were saying something about the, the Sunny Hill uh, team and, you know, something, something happening with y'all with your 8-0, it's beating the college guys. Pick right. up there, and then you can transition into talking about the whole prep school experience. Uh, Yeah, you know, we just had a good team. You know, Rashid Wallace, Alvin Williams, Katino Mo. Like, we just had a bomb squad. We had a uh, – it was out um, the Kasha Hawkins on. So, we had everybody. We had everybody. We had a really good team. Uh, Jason Lawson. We had all the rebounds. Like, we just had the best – we had a really good team. And that team yeah. did well everywhere we went, obviously, with all those players. So, you know, um, you know, so that was just a, that was just a great experience to, to do that there. Played against a lot of good players and, you know what I mean, older guys. So, it was great. No doubt. Hey, shout out to another legend who I definitely got to get on the show, Aaron Owens. A.O.'s in the building. <laughs> A.O., there you go. <laughs> hey, so so talk about the, the the bridge the gap between FLC that that amazing year to what led to um you having to go well you know you, you going to 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 the uh the school you went to prior to so, so MCI um reached out I didn't know anything about those type of things and they were like you know uh you know you could play get a, get another year and especially since I only played one year mm -hmm. I'm like okay. So I mean, was was that on your mind, or I mean, I mean, I was just but besides that, I, I wanted to go to college and all that, but I was just trying to see what was going to happen next, to be honest. Okay. And then a few of them came, but then when I heard about this one, they was like, "This is the number one prep school. They send the most guys to D one." Sam Cassell went there, and that was the biggest thing. As soon as they said that, I was like, "I love Sam Cassell, even when okay. he was at when he was at Florida State." Yeah. Damn, so Sam went there, and uh, then I found out. Katino was going. Okay. That cat was going. So I'm like, wow. Oh, and was going was going there as well. Yeah, same time as you. Going, he was going there too. Wow. So, you know, we end up going out there all the way out in Maine, Maine Central Institute. Wow. You know, so Golden you and Cat, yo, this is this is exclusive. I had no idea. I didn't yeah. know that you and Cat went to, to the prep school together. Yeah, yeah. We wow. Went out, we went out hey, there. Hey, listen, hold, we got we gotta take a time out. Listen, people, okay. if you tuned in. This is some exclusive information that my man Sean Colson is giving up. I just found out that him and Cat Mobley went to prep school together, Maine Central Institute up in Maine. Classic, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Right. So so we went to MCI, and, uh, you know, it's all the way in Maine. It's 10, 11 hours from Philly, cold as ever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we get up there. It's cold. <laughs> it kind of changed me, like changed my life, actually. His name is Max Good. So he was uh -huh. a D1 coach before, but really known for getting Brad Millers, a million, uh, and, uh, DeMar Johnson, a million NBA guys that went past through MCI when he was there. So he um, he changed me. You know, mm -hmm. I was a little spoiled, you know what I mean? I was a little, you know, he, and, and it's funny. Sometimes you get the lessons, the lessons from the people you least expect. I understand. White man, I mean, just just ornery, really tough, but just care a lot. But the way he cared was kind of different, depending on who you are. How uh -huh. you take it. He was up in your face care. Like, you motherfucker. Like, he's that at all yeah. day long. You can take your fucking ass back to Philadelphia if you don't like what's going on. And I mean today. 
I get you a bus ticket today. Wow. He's one of those guys. Wow. So when I first got up there, I was like, damn. <laughs> every day, I mean, at Kentucky, everybody is at our practices. Wow. Like, damn. Wow. That's just amazing. Like, every day is all the top schools there. So I'm just wow. Like, wow. We end up having nine Division One players on that team. Nine. Wow. Yes. Wow. Out of 11 players, we had nine Division One players. Wow. So, you know, it was interesting because, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't starting. Okay. I'm, like, Yo, I'm giving it to this guy. He had already signed at Iowa State, but I guess he didn't get his SATs. That was the reason he was there. Okay. And I'm just like, why is he playing? Like, why is he starting over me? Uh -huh. And he was just like, because you don't deserve it. Your, <laughs> your attitude. And, you know, he would be like this. Like, Catino played in the Catholic League. So, a lot of those coaches probably, you know, he was kind of used to that. Yeah. I really wasn't used to that. You know what I mean? He was, I mean, this type of hollering at you all day. You know, mm -hmm. Spit coming out of his mouth. Or you just sitting there just like, oh, my God, this man. White man at that. Like, you just, you know, back then. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't around a lot of people that wasn't black. So, you know, it was a, it was a big, you know, the whole town, just all, like, it was just, it was just different. Wow. It was very different. And, um, you know, I had to adjust, but, you know, one day he was just like, you really good, but you're an asshole. And, and you're soft. <laughs> he was like, you soft. And I was like, what? I was like, I was like, I'm and I said it. I said the classic, I said, what? I'm from North Philly. What are you talking about? He was like, I don't care where you're from. You could be from North Philly, but you soft up here. I'm not saying you're not tough as in, you know, you think about fighting and things like that. I'm not saying that. You soft-minded. The things that I do or say to you, it mm -hmm. bothers you. I understand. And you shouldn't let it bother you. Mm -hmm. And from that day on, I just stopped letting it bother me. And, you know, he was great. Max Good was just the, he was just the best, man, like the best. And, you know, we end up going – 31 and one. Wow. We're the number one team in the country in prep school. Number one in the wow. country. Nine division one players. You know and y'all, you guys traveled, you guys traveled yeah, the country. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. everywhere. Who, 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 who do you remember? Do you remember any, um, any memorable players along the way that went on to, to pros and stuff like that? You know, what, what's some, some, some really good experience you remember from those days? So let me tell you, that's funny. I'm going to tell you the most famous person that we played against. And it's not necessarily for the, for the right reason right now. Okay. You know the guy Merle Cole that's caught up in all that stuff for, with Adidas and the, and the payment of, of all the stuff with Louisville and it's just a lot. Of yes, stuff. yes. The Nike yes. guy. He was a guard there with uh, Harold Dean. He played Fort Union Military Academy. Wow. And, and and we lost to them in triple overtime down there and they in the championship of their tournament. Wow. Yep. That's he, crazy. He's like the point guard and him and Harold Dean who end up going to Virginia where the uh, for the guards there. Yo, that's exclusive right there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we played against them, but there's a lot of good players that end up going on and things like that. But, you know, like I said, we had nine Division One players. Mm-hmm. So nine Division One. So, you know, we, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a great, it was a great time because you just got better. You know what I mean? I passed my SATs. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, on my own, like all the stuff that I knew I could do, that I was messing around with. You know, up there is just basketball and books. You know what I mean? Basketball and books. And that's what uh that's what made us that's what made it great because, you know, it it was an experience. Uh -huh. just, you know, it was guys from everywhere, California, Cleveland, Ohio. You know, I got friends that, you know, still my friends to this day that I met in prep school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all went through that same experience. You know, end up having a lot of schools to pick from. Me and Cat end up going to Rhode Island together, so mm -hmm. it was a great. It was a it was it was it was a good look, man. Yeah. So what uh, what eventually led you to Rhode Island, opposed to you know any uh, any of the other places? What you know made that a good fit for you? Think so. We had a lot of schools on us, but a lot of so, the right, top and, and, schools, and were you and Cat planning on being a package deal or yes, no? Yes, and and a lot of schools that wanted him had a point guard. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools wanted me had a two guard. Mm -hmm. So like Cat at the end, you know, we had I had Cincinnati, I had big, really big school. Cat had Kentucky looking at him. Wow. But but we ended up going to Rhode Island because, you know, we wanted to play together. And we uh -huh. didn't really want to go to Temple because they had people, even though they liked us, 
and we didn't really want to come home. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so we ended up going to Rhode Island. Horace Owens really pushed us there. The assistant coach at uh, at uh, LaSalle now, you know, he was really one of my mentors. He, uh, you know, was my coach down Sunny Hill, and uh, he and he went there. Okay, Horace went to Rhode Island, so he pushed us there. So, got you. So I noticed that you. Um... Where I know you from is UNC Charlotte. So tell me yes. what happened at Rhode Island that led to you going to UNC Charlotte. So I tore my Achilles my first year. Tore okay. my Achilles out for the season. Wow. Second year, I come back. I, I redshirted. They brought in Tyson Wheeler. So Tyson, really good friend of mine. You know, I wasn't worried because I saw him play. Mm -hmm. I, I was one convinced to me and Catino convinced him to come. So we playing. And, you know, Tyson's about maybe 30, 40 minutes away. That's where he lives at. That's where he was from, New London, New London, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. So we played, and, uh, you know, I was doing my thing. Coach comes up to me and tells me, I would like for you to come off the bench. So I'm like, man, I didn't work my way from – I didn't work my way from uh, my Achilles and all that type of stuff. And now you ask me to come off the bench for somebody I'm better than – I just wasn't feeling it. And I wasn't mature enough to handle it. Okay. So I literally used to do stuff like, I was, I was you know, we played. Because I started the first couple of games. We started together. I started at the two. And then he asked me that after the first three games, we were one and two. Like, can you come off the bench? I'm like, come off the bench? What? <laughs> so it, I, I, just wasn't, I just wasn't mature enough. I would do stuff like, I would score. Because I was better than Tyson when, I was, when we were young. I would score all seven points. When we playing against each other, I'm on the second team, and I would holler every time, like, and I'm on the second team, like every time we <laughs> score, like the whole. So once again, being a jackass, during, you mean during the game? Do, no, during yes. Yeah, so imagine the second team against the first team in practice. Oh, uh, I'm doing practice. Yes, we would beat them. We would beat them because I should be on the first team. You know what I mean? I had a year over Tyson because I had red shirt. I was one year old, so I just was better than him at that point. <laughs> so you, so, so you I would carry my team. Yeah, I would carry my team. So I'm like, eh, but that made it worse. The coach was just like, okay, you doing that? I'm just <laughs> going. I'm just going to make it worse. So my time went down and down and down. Wow. And down. So Atlantic Ten tournament was in at the Palestra then in Philadelphia. So we got to come home. Yes. So we played two games, and I played a lot, but I already had my mind made up. So when we got back, I walked up to him. I was like, yeah, you know, um, I want my transfer papers. And he wow. was like, oh, think about it. You know, we about to have spring break. And he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait. We waited 10 days. And then, you know, right after the break, his first day back, I called the secretary, like, is coach there? He's like, yep. I went there. I was like, all right, I thought about it. I want my papers. Wow. And he was just like, are you sure? Yes. Gave wow. my papers. I went to junior college. Still had a year left. Uh, and and was, this, was this a decision that you uh, made up on your own, or you had family or just some people, like, helping you make the decision? or no, it was like, your uh, it was me. He, was like he was like, I should stay there and stick it out. I was like, nope. And then Cat, you know, Cat was like, yo, I came here for you. And now you about to leave? I was like, yeah, but Cat, I can't do it. I can't, I can't mess with this coach. I'm out of here. Wow. So I went to junior college in Hagerstown, Maryland. Mm -hmm. That was a great experience. End up. Going being an All American in junior college, did great. Had Cincinnati again on my list. That was always my favorite school. Mm -hmm. But them and UNC Charlotte was in the same conference, and I did the same thing like I did with Franklin Anderson and Grass. Uh, Cincinnati got people that had Kenya Martin, they had a really good team. Ruben Patterson, Danny <laughs> Forts, and all those pros there. Yes, yes. Like, you know what? I'm gonna go to UNC Charlotte because I think I can make a bigger impact. Of course. I only got two years left. So I went there, and, you know, it worked out. You know, the rest is history. I had two great years. We was in the tournament, top ten in the country. You know, I, I did well. You know, obviously one of the top point guards in the country when I was in college those two years. And, 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 and stay there for a second. So you were one of the top point guards in the country when you were there. So who were some of the other guards, just to kind of put in perspective for some of the younger players that, that you were, you know, that was amongst the conversation with you? Ed Coda, obviously at North Carolina, uh, DeWine, Wheat, Louisville. Uh, you know, I played when Larry Hughes was playing then. Larry at, Hughes uh, at St. Louis, St. right? St. Louis, yeah. Uh -huh. like, so, you know, there was a lot of top players just in our conference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We had a lot of pros in 
that was a great league. Uh, Conference USA when I was there. It's not the Conference USA now. <laughs> That's more of a football conference now. But uh -huh. we had all the all the pros was in there uh, then. So you know, it's a lot of good players, man, back then. And um, you know, we did well. I did well. And and um, you know, that was it. We lost to North Carolina in the um, we lost to North Carolina in the tournament in the second round. They had uh, Vince Carter, Wow, Shamaya Williams. Brandon Haywood, Brandon Haywood, uh, who else? Ed Coda, uh, Okalaja, mm -hmm. Antoine Jamison. Yes, yes. Wow. Had, so their, their team back then, they had all six of them went to the NBA. Except, yeah. no, no, no. Ed Coda didn't go to the NBA, but Brandon Haywood did. So uh -huh. what they did was they had someone wouldn't start every game. Mm -hmm. They had like a starting six. Yeah. So every, every game, so like they had Ed Coda, Shaman Williams, Vince Carter, Vince Carter, Antoine Jamison, and Okalaja. You said Brenda Haywood. No, they had Brenda Haywood and Okalaja. So uh -huh. those six, somebody would rotate every game and win. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you know, we lost to them in double overtime. Wow, double overtime? No, in overtime, in overtime. No, we lost them in overtime. And, wow. Uh, you know, I did well that game, too. I had 24 and 10 against wow. them. But Shemaya and Vince was too much. Like, we did a good job on Jamison, who was, like, first-team All-American that year. Uh -huh. But, but uh, Shemaya gave us, like, 30. Vince gave us, like, 20-something. So, you know, they beat us. And that was the end of my college career. So Crazy. What uh, what's, what um Is that one of your most memorable experiences at, at UNC Charlotte? Um, or do you have any others? Uh, we played Cincinnati. And Dickie V and though ESPN was at the game, obviously two highly ranked teams. And uh Kenyon Martin, my guy, got into it. He's a freshman then. Got into it with our fans. <laughs> he got into it. He's on the bench and got into it with our fans. It was like almost rumbled like it was crazy. <laughs> I, I remember that. I remember that. I, no, he was a, that was my junior year. I think that <laughs> might have been my junior year. Might may have been my senior, I'm not sure. But I also remember shooting shots and Kenya Martin going up and just catching it. Yes. Like just going right up like K Mark just going up and catching the ball. Like, damn, whether it was golden or not, just like catching it out there. You had to shoot like you had to shoot teardrops to the sky to get it over him. Yes. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so so tell me about um life after. Talk about life after um UNC Charlotte. Um, you know, just you know, like like I guess when you were you considering pro, did you get an agent? Did you think you were good enough to go to the NBA? What, what was that journey like? So, so I picked a bad year to come out in '98. You know, the so the draft comes. It's uh the draft comes. So let me let me start on my senior year first. So my senior year, I get into this big melee, right? Get into a melee, and I and I'm kind of like the cult, the leader. So I get suspended for the first month of the season. Wow. So I only missed the first two or three games, but I missed the preseason part, all of that. Wow. So my school suspended me. So when that happened, you know, that was kind of a big thing. I was on sports and Alvin Williams. I remember <laughs> I remember Alvin Williams calling me and telling me, like, yo, man, you all right? You need us to uh, bail you out and things like that. He's <laughs> been all those guys messing with me. And uh, it, it, it made it made Sports Center and everything. Yeah, 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 for sure. For wow. Sure. So I was, you know, we were my senior year. We were ninth in the country preseason. So you know, we were kind of known, and I was known. Yeah. Had a good junior year. So uh, what happened was that kind of stuck with me. So I did good. I went to Chicago pre-draft camp. Did good. My team went five and zero. You know, we did good. But my 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 conversation with the team. You know, talked about that, those type of things. Like, you know, do you think you're better than people? This, that, other. I think the bottom line was, you know, I was picked to go 41st in the draft. I was actually picked to go before Cat. Cat was picked like later. Uh huh. And you know, I'm excited. I'm gonna get drafted. I'm happy. And I didn't get drafted. And Cat got drafted. Wow. So happy for him. But I knew all of that stuff had stuck with me, kind of. You know what I mean? And I'm not. I wasn't that good enough to get through that team's, you know, questioning, you know, are you a thug or not, and this, that, that, so all that type of stuff. So didn't get drafted. 
So, 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 do you think, so do you think that that stigma, I mean, I guess from, from, from that melee kind of played a part? Yeah, for in, sure. You know, because I mean, you know, they, they, they got to read your resume and they go through your resume and it's like a job interview. So they got to go through I, your history and all. I mean, I averaged 17 points and eight assists as a senior. And I was third in the country in assists. My team was good. I mean, wow. you know, I, I did well against everybody I played against. So, you know, that's why I was picked to go 41st in the draft. But it didn't happen. Wow. And uh, so it was a lockout. So, you know, you had to just wait. I end up going, I end up going to uh, the CBA. Uh-huh. Went to the CBA. Did pretty good. Summertime, still didn't do anything. Next year, I went to the CBA, and um, I did well. I did really well in the CBA. And then, uh, so I was there a year and a half, and then that, I, I did the uh, USBL, actually. Mm -hmm. Great. Did the USBL, got MVP of that, of that league. You know, a lot of NBA players came down to try to get back up, or uh -huh. guys that were just trying to get up went through that league. So it played against a lot of that summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people noticed me. So I went to the CBA, but only played like three games. Okay. And I never went to an NBA camp, none of that. I played three games, and then I got called up, and that was it. I got called up by Atlanta first. And then Atlanta, I was there for, you know, my couple of 10 days, and they were like, uh, you know, we need veterans. Lion Kruger just came up. At, from a college coach to a pro coach, he was like, you know, I just, I just need veterans. So I went down to the CBA. I played one more game, and then Houston got me, and then that was it. Stayed wow. with the Rock, and I was with so the just, Rockets. Just, out of curiosity, so you don't get drafted, and then you go, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you basically showcasing your game, CBA, and this and that, and then for somebody to pull you up, I mean, what, 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 what why, why not just draft you? I don't know, but it, it's funny. For me, I, like I always say, I was confident. So I was like, when I got called, I was like, this should have been happening. I wasn't Man, like, that's what, that's I what had I'm like, saying. Yeah. like, what are you doing? Why are these guys getting up and late? So, you know, but I always, uh, you know, it always was kind of the long route, the tough route for me. You know what yeah. I mean? So, which is okay. You know, uh -huh. you know, everybody don't get the easy route. So, you know, yeah. I, you know, I persevered and, you know what I mean? It is what it is. So. Yeah. So you get called up and what was that experience like? It was great. You know, I went to the Rockets, and, you know, Cat was there. Cat was what? there again. Yo, wait. Cat. It's crazy right. how this thing kind of right. keeps coming back to you and Cat. <laughs> Keep Cat yep. Mobley. So Cat was there. But then I got cool with Steve Francis, and it was just great, man. You know, I had went down there quite a few times, uh, you know, when Cat was in the league before I even got there. And, you know, I, um, I ended up being able to get in the runs. And then, you know, that league, I mean, when I got in the league, it was just like, man, I'm here to stay. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm there. It was just a great time. It was a great time for me, man. You just, you know, your dreams coming true. Life, money, attention, just, it was just great. You know what I mean? Playing behind Steve Francis, whenever I played, I did well. And then I played in the summer with the Rockets. Actually, I played Eddie Griffin. From wow. here was on our team. They drafted them seventh in the. Uh, they drafted them seventh in the, uh, in the in the draft or whatever. Yes, I got yes. one story. It's not a great Eddie Griffin story, but it was funny. So, <laughs> so Amari Stoudemire came out that year. Okay, he had a great he had a great um, workout with the Rockets. Uh huh. He wanted to come to the Rockets. Okay. They took Eddie Griffin. Uh huh. So we played them in the summer league, Phoenix against the Rockets. So we playing. So first time he get the ball, he goes spin, dunk it. I mean, so hard, try to rip the court down. Like the, the traditional, you know, yeah. spin, Amari yes. Stoudemire, like that was his dunk. Yeah. Yes. So we go, we get it to Eddie Griffin. Eddie Griffin go to the hole. No, block. <laughs> so Eddie Griffin did all right that game. And I remember me going for a, 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 um, a floater. He just, I mean, threw it, like, into the stands. Like, <laughs> obvious goal <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, why you do that, young? I was like, why you do that, young fella? He was like, cuz, man. And he told me the story real quick while we going. He was like, man, they promised to take me. They didn't take me. So I'm going to show them they should have taken me. Yeah, I'm telling you, you better shoot it to the moon. 
Every time you throw it, I'm blocking everything that comes to the room. I'm like, all right. Yo, Amari I know you in your mind, you was like, yo, appreciate the heads up. Listen, Amari started my at like 38 points, man, in a in a summer league game against him. Like wow. he was just dunking everything and just I was just like, damn, you know, he came straight from high school. He's like 18, 19 years old. He was like 19 then. I think he's 19. I was like, damn, like he was incredible. Yeah. That was after my first year. Wow. So then, so then I had the next year. So this is how my NBA career ended. This is crazy how, how it goes. Oh, man, I got to get my popcorn for this one. No, no, no. So Steve Francis is uh, is 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 coming back. So he signed, you know, Steve Francis signs for like $80 million. So uh, Muchi Nars is injured. He But he kind of holding out for, for a contract, a new contract. So they're telling me, listen, you're going to be the third point guard again. Don't worry about it. You're good. I'm like, ah, okay, I'm good. I love Houston. I love living down there, cat there. But my agent, won't say his name, my guy, got so many top players, but this was then. He was like, you should go to Toronto, and uh, they like you. He's like, if Houston really like you, they would sign you. I'm like, yeah, but they telling me how – that the owner just worried about how much he's going to have to play Mucci. He don't want to put so much into the point guard position. Even though I'm going to get the minimum, uh, I, I want to do it because I love Houston. I love yep. the situation. The coaches like me. Rudy T like me. My agent, instead of not knowing, he worked for me. He got to do what I say. Exactly. I, I didn't do that. I listened to him, and I went to Toronto. I get to Toronto. It's cool. Al there. Vince there. So I know them. But Carlos Arroyo there. Gotcha. Carlos Arroyo, I didn't know this. Al, like, well, they're trying to, they want, you know, Carlos Arroyo was going to be the first Puerto Rican player in the NBA if he had made it. Mm -hmm. It was me against him. So the practices, the games, preseason games, I'm like, I'm playing with dudes that work at CBS. <laughs> and he playing with like vets and all. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. Wait, and practice is going well, but like in the games, I'm playing again. I'm like, damn, I got NBA experience. He don't got he throwing oops at vets. They going crazy. They saying stuff, you know, in the in, in the uh in Spanish or Puerto Rican land. I'm just like, <laughs> he's like damn near like a cult hero. Like every time you get in, they just going crazy. I'm like, oh my God. And I've never seen Al get this man. Al went up to them and to Lenny Wilkins and all of them. He was like, this is BS that y'all doing it like this. It's so disfavorable. It's not fair. Like, man, that's showing not fair, it man. just as good as him. He's better than him. And y'all doing, y'all making it so obvious who y'all want. Why did y'all bring them here? He just was on an NBA team. He could have stayed where he was at. Wow. And, and, and you know, obviously it didn't work out. Damn. And when that didn't work out, I decided to go overseas. Okay. So I go overseas. Did, did you have any other NBA options that you could have tried? Or? Maybe my agent was telling me, let's just wait, go to the CBA, and you're going to get called up again. I was like, nope, I'm going overseas. Okay. So I went overseas, and, you know, I, I did well, and, you know, it, it went well in the next season. I was like, you know what? I'm just going, you know, I had a kid. I was like, you know, I had my first kid when I was in the league. I was like, you know what? I'm just going, I'm just going, uh, I had my daughter. I have a daughter and a son. So I had my daughter, Kyrie, and I was just like, you know what? I want to make sure, you know, me and my family is good. Mm -hmm. So I went for another year, and then I killed. Like, I did good that first year. I really did, but I killed. And yeah. it was like 30. And wow. Whoa, wait, whoa. They started talking about the money. I was like, wait, so wait, I'm about to make 350, 400. Wait, that's NBA money and there's no tax money. Yes. So <laughs> I did that. And then they start having posters of me. Oh. And then next thing you know, I'm on a Pepsi can, like I'm okay. a like I'm a like okay. I'm a, a soccer player or something. Like, oh, okay. wait, wait, wait. hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Well, we got wait, 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 wait. I gotta I gotta 
oh, I got to think this. I'm missing home, and I want to go to the NBA stuff. Like, hold up. You know, my, <laughs> mom, my mom is coming over, and she's like, like, they're really running up to you at supermarkets and in the street just to touch you. Wow. I'm like, oh. I'm like yeah, that's how I did. So I and want every field. What team was that? What, what, team, what that country was, was that? That was Italy, and it was uh, Juve Caserta. Wow. So, so I went, I, I averaged 30, and I led the league in assists, won MVP, but, man, like, I had, to, I, had to, I, had to, I had to think it. I had to think it. <laughs> wait up. Wait up. I love home and all that, but wait. The south of France ain't bad. That's right. I mean, I'm sorry. The south of Italy. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Yep. So so that's how I end up just staying, man. Then, you know, you after a while, you know, you just over there and that's it. You know what I mean? It's like no coming back. You know, I start going to France, and now I'm living in the south of France. And, mm -hmm. you know, the Cannes Film Festival is 20 minutes down the street. So I'm just, wow. Damn. So, you know, it just, it just, but that's you really made it. yourself comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. So, you were, know. Were, were, was there any adversity or any, any, because um, every, uh, some, some of the players, people I've talked to about going overseas, they said there's some adversity or some adjustment, whether it's the language or the culture or just something. I don't know. The, the team, I don't, anything. Was there any adversity or, or it was, I had the best real? times. I had the best times. And I lucked up. Now, the, the same luck that I didn't get with that Toronto Houston situation, I got in Europe. Okay. I never was in countries. I was always in main countries. Mm -hmm. And listen, I never spent time in like a little small. I, yeah. when you, know, you hear the story, oh, I wasn't getting paid. Oh, yeah. I didn't, my internet wasn't working. No. I was in Italy, Turkey, France, and I mean in great places where I'm really like, established where, main where countries people, like you where people in Russia, where people they want to come where I live at. Like, yo, I'm coming there for the weekend. Guys wow. that play in other cities in that country, like, yo, I'm coming there for the weekend. Because I, so I just I really lucked up in that. You know, what I mean mm -hmm. I got paid a lot of money, obviously, and I, I did well, but I lived well too. You know what I mean? I really lived well. So, you know, I got no complaints about my, you know, European, uh, my European career at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What's, uh, what's one of your most prized um, um, accomplishments over there? You know, you talked about, you know, averaging 30 and, and you know, all the assists and getting MVP. Is there any, any other major accomplishments that you, that kind of stick out to you from the from overseas experience, from your professional experience? Uh, you know, actually, I have disappointment, to be honest. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I didn't, so I feel like I'm cultured, you know what I mean? But I didn't take advantage of that because I was getting paid a lot of money, right? But I used to always have my eye back home, whether okay. it's the NBA or just home. Mm -hmm. So the first was the most important days. Man, I'm getting 40000 a month because I'm making four hundred. Well, I'm getting 30000 a month because I'm making three hundred. Like, those and I, I concentrated on that. I had a lot of fun, obviously. Like mm -hmm. nightlife, it was just fun. The place I was at, but I didn't go to museums and you know I lived in, I lived in France for two years. You know what I mean? I, and I lived in the south of France, with Cannes and Nice. I lived in you know in Italy, obviously in north and, uh, and, and south of uh, Italy. So, but I didn't take advantage of those type of things that I wish that I would have. Like the cultural experiences yes, and all that yes, kind of yes, stuff. For gotcha. sure, for sure. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Sure. You hear Jay-Z talking about certain places in France and, you know what I mean, and certain areas. Like, I went there, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't experience it like I should have. I didn't take advantage as much because my mind was like home. Got gotcha. you. Home, USA, NBA, stuff like yeah. that. So I didn't enjoy it as much gotcha. as, Curious, as I should have. So fast forward, at what point did your professional career um, – and and then how did you you know what, what type of closure did you have around that chapter of your life so i'm in france i tear my other achilles oh wow i've torn both of my achilles mm. so i tore my achilles oh, and... oh real quick paul pause that my fault we got another uh legend in the building john linehan he said you was overseas you ain't come visit you ain't come visit your boy He's not. He's, he's, he's telling a he's telling a fib right now because <laughs> me and John played against each other in France. John, John, John's, a, John's a great guy, obviously. But my we played man, against each my other man. in France, and we didn't really, really super know each other. Like we knew of each other, but I remember getting over there. And listen, I can say this. I can actually say this. 
So, you know, John Linehan is the all-time stills leader in the NCAA, right? Yes. When I, when I came over France from Italy, all the coaches and players, that's all they talked about. He'll just take it from you. <laughs> you're, watching the, you're watching the tapes. And, you know, I knew he was from Chester. I'm just watching him. But we didn't really know each other personally. We just knew of each other. Yeah. So you're just watching the tape, and you're just like, damn, people. Not only is he taking it, he has so many people in fear that sometimes <laughs> they just falling down and just giving it to him. Like, it was just <laughs> crazy. Like, John, John really had the biggest impact besides a shot blocker that i ever seen in my life. Like, wow. people just like, they, he would run over there and just take the ball. Like, God, <laughs> damn. It was just crazy. So in my mind, you know, there's, two people, there's two people who I can say this. I played against them. They are great defenders. <laughs> they never just stole the ball from me. I'm not saying that they didn't. I threw a pass and they stole But never me just having the ball and they just went in my pockets and just took my lunch money. <laughs> and listen, I'll tell you why. John Linehan, you know, I wouldn't play with him. Oh. I would literally just get the ball and, you know, he waiting on these moves and just dribble up court. Pill, hesitate, go. <laughs> if he try to reach in, I'm trying to take his head off. Now, this is what I didn't know, John. I'm yes. trying to really, like, I'm talking about decapitate every bone in his face <laughs> if he try to reach. It was like football because I was just like, he's not taking the ball from me. He's not taking the ball from me. But he had you thinking. Even somebody like me, who I felt like was really good, he was just incredible <laughs> on the defensive end. Like, I'm talking about incredible. And I'm talking about the best of the best. John Linehan just make you look silly. <laughs> so him and Shante Rogers. Uh-huh. Shante Rogers, you know, a lot of people don't know about in my area they did, from Baltimore, you know, went to George Washington, had a good career overseas. He used to just take the ball. He's so small, 5'3". Now, John wasn't like that, but he was just little. He just take the ball, take the ball, take the ball from him. Crazy. And from, from high school, I played against him in a lot of leagues. And I just always would just don't play with those guys. Get it the way I need to get it and then get it to somebody else or just run a play and, and that's it. But it doesn't know I'm going to cross them and go behind my back and then do it three times. Like, I'm not doing none of that against them. Ain't a whole bunch and, of you know. No, and people would try them and it, will, it wouldn't work out for them. <laughs> I see it like it wouldn't work out at all. I so love it. I, I, I'm proud of that, that I can say that John, right? John Leonard has never, ever just, just went in my pockets and took my lunch money. I'm proud of that. Now, I'm not here to say either. John could probably say, well, Sean Coates has shook a lot of people. He's never shook me. Nope, I never shook John because I'm just getting it up the court and getting it to do what I got to do. I ain't doing none of that. You wasn't trying to do the court. No, play. I ain't doing none of that. You was no. just trying to get it up the court no, and get, get it to the next man. Yeah, I ain't doing none of that. Yo, that's this is funny. That's a major accomplishment. Yes. In a career yes. to say, look, John Linehan, you can put that on your resume. I've never been stripped by John Linehan. No, you, no, you can put it on no. your resume. Listen, That's major. Listen. <laughs> and I haven't played against John like 10 times and nothing like that, but he literally, listen, I saw the best of the best, even guys that I didn't, that wasn't on my team. You know, you go to games, I'm watching, I'm just like, they, like they just, they just petrified. They got the two guard bringing up guys that was good. And I'm just like, <laughs> damn, like, they're not bringing the ball up. Like, they're not bringing the ball up at all. None. <laughs> the whole game, they just turned into a two-guard whenever they played John. So That's crazy. That's my guy, though, man. Like, he's real good dude off the court, too. A hundred percent. Hey, well, you were just mentioning um, how, closure toward the other Achilles and how, how this, it, it was kind of kind of winding down. Yeah, so I tore my Achilles in France. You know, I was doing really good. And then um, I came back, came back from that. And, uh, you know, it worked out for me. And I played a year or two after that. I really wasn't the same. Like, the first one really didn't do nothing because I was younger. And I was mm -hmm. more athletic, could run, jump. That really hurt me a little bit, uh, the second one. Okay. I, it, was, it was good, but I just wasn't the same. Okay. So I got out without them putting me out, where you can't okay. get jobs and things like that. <laughs> I got out. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I know okay. I could go another year. I got paid a whole lot of money. I'm I'm done with this. I'm gonna go do something else. Okay. So that's yeah. what I did. So was it was it any type of like you know closure that you had to have you know or was it was just like it was easy like I mean because you went all your life playing ball or was was it easy for you to get out and train? So I was I was good because I was doing well 
But I, in my mind, I didn't feel like I could do everything I could do before okay. at a super top level. Okay. There was enough to do well, but I felt it. Like, damn, I okay. can't. So I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to be the guy where they like, damn, he used to be super good. <laughs> like, no, I'd rather I, – I know I had a year or two in me left where I, at good basketball. But I was yeah. like, I'd rather leave before they tell me to leave. Like, of yo, course. man, you, you, you're you not super good. No more. And I feel like, you know, I've done well at every level. Uh -huh. You know, in Europe, you know, I've, I've done the Euro League well. You know, in Italy, I'm a legend over Italy. Now, I don't like to say that, but I can actually say that about Italy and France. I'm a legend in them places. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I said, being on Pepsi cans where they're selling them in the stores. and all, Like, wow. so I don't want to mess that up by me just being hard. <laughs> they know me from winning MVPs and killing. Yeah, yeah, I can't agent go tell from you, that. Your agent tell you, yo, they, they taking you off the Pepsi can. Right. Yeah, I can't do that. So I'm good. So I just decided to keep it moving. That's what's up, man. And when you think about your your, your basketball journey, man, what, what what have you learned throughout your life, you know, through this journey, man? What were some of the things that basketball's taught you about yourself or about life in general? Basketball has taught me so much because it's brought me around a lot of people that maybe I wouldn't have been around if it wasn't for basketball. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's also taught me a lot of life lessons that I pass on now. You know, I'm at an inner city school. I'm at I'm at Martin Luther King High School, so I'm the I'm the coach, and I'm also obviously I'm the dean of students when I'm there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I run through troubled times every day. Players, whether it's uh, young young men and young ladies, obviously because I'm a dean, but you know, I'm a coach as well, so I, I'm able to pass on a lot of my experiences, and I think basketball has taught me that because there's been a lot of ups and downs. More ups, obviously, thank God. I'm a guy who has had many more ups and downs, but I can share those experiences with people. I can talk to people that's, you know, was in my same situation in high school, not doing what they were supposed to, or overlooked, or, you know, a chip on your shoulder, whatever it was, not working as hard as you need to, whatever it is, I can kind of be that person and say, you know, I was kind of there too. One mm -hmm. thing about me, though, I always worked hard on my game. Got you. So that I can't really, I can't really vibe with this new guys that don't really work because I always worked on my game. I didn't necessarily do everything right when I was <laughs> in school and this, that, that, but basketball wise, I always worked on my game. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's, that's what you live for. When you mm -hmm. play against people, you want them to know you're good. When you play, you want the crowd to know you're good. Everybody on this pod, on, on this, on this, that's following this or who knows me. What did I say to you? I don't really like talking about myself. I don't really like talking. I like to joke with my friends. Of I course. love when people talk about me in a good way because uh -huh. uh -huh. that means, you know, I've done good things for people to talk about. Uh -huh. But this is not really me right here. I'm a, I, I appreciate never talk it. about I really myself. Appreciate that. I you told me that. I yeah, I would it, never man. do that. But, you know, it, it's fun to go back, you know, to live the time. I like looking at stuff. Like I saw your interview with Alvin. I saw your interview with Flip. I saw you in a review with Mike Jordan. I like to look, even though I know those guys real well, I like to, I like to see those type of things. You know what of I mean? Course. So this is, it's not uncomfortable because I do a lot of speaking, but I just don't like to sit up there and just be like, yo, I was tough. I was that yeah. guy. Man, gotcha. you know what I mean? I don't like to do that. Uh, and I, I kind of like to, um, I feel like the kids nowadays, I relate to them because you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, you know, it's a lot of, I ain't going to say beef, but it's kind of a lot of miscommunication between the the younger guys and the older guys because, you know, anything you say that's a little critical, people think you hating or, and yeah. then sometimes we are hating, you know what I mean? Because it's like, <laughs> I see guys every day, now that guys play, right? Guys rank this, that. I'm telling you, I know this for a fact. I would blow them out the water when I played. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I wouldn't actually say that. Say that. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say like, oh, I see a guy in AU and he ranked this. And I'm like, yo, when you play, I would have mangled you. And I play. <laughs> it, it's daytime. It's our time. You know, it was our time. Now it's daytime. I don't, I don't, I don't, I try not to really get into that. You know what I mean? Because we just got to support. You got to support and, and just keep it moving. Now you got to tell guys the truth as well. Of course. Of course. You know what I mean? But, you know, our time was our time. 
And now uh -huh. this is daytime, but you know, we do a lot of, you know, in this city and everywhere, it's always a lot of, you know, um, it's a lot of uh, comparison all the time. Uh -huh. Oh man, I was this and this guy was that. And, uh, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it, it's just different times now. It's just different times. So, you know, I, I like to be the person, and especially since I'm around, like I train guys. Gotcha. So I don't, I don't be like, hey, DeAndre Hunter, you know, I'm, uh, when it was, when we played, such and such <laughs> would have killed you. Even though you didn't make the league, it, like, that, that, that does nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. it's, it's guys now, they're good for their time. We're good. That's uh -huh. it. You never know what would have happened. You can think and say what probably would have happened. But, you know, every every time is different. It's guys uh, that was before us, the Doug Overton's and all, they'll probably say they're better than us. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so you know what I mean? It's, it's uh, I try to be that guy that, you know, I, I, that, you know, I, I, I can relate to us, but I also can relate to now because I'm in the mix. You know what I mean? I train people every day, whether it's in L.A., Houston, Dallas. You know, I'm everywhere training guys. Yeah. And obviously here in Philly, I, I train every day. You know what yeah. I mean? So I, I just try to be, you know, I just try to be versatile enough to, you know, be down with the youth while also sticking to my roots. Still in tune, you know what I mean, with now and yes, everything. Yeah. Yes. Hey, well, I have one more question for you. And just just like I said, the uh, top of the uh, top of the first hour, um, for the people, uh, we're going to have a nice little Q&A. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask my last question. Then I'm going to turn it over to, you know, a couple of the viewers um, just, just uh, you know, type some questions. So if you're watching this right now, you're in tune to my man, Sean Colson, legend, man. He's telling his story. He took, his, took the time out to sit down with us. Um, start typing your questions right now because I'm going to ask my last question. And I'm going to let, you know, my man, Sean Colson, you know, answer some questions from the people, and then we're going to we gonna close it out. Um, so my last question, um, Mr. Colson, is, um, you know, you talked about one of the last things you were talking about was the youth. Uh, what's some advice you would give to, 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 to some younger players um, currently, you know, that, that are balling right now, trying to get to where, you know, where you were? Man, just work hard, man. You know, every, every environment has, every era has its trials and tribulations, like, you know, I, I got players that, you know, I've actually had to go to hospitals because they didn't got shot, former players and things like that. And, you know, I'm scared to death because people are calling me saying, this happened to this person. You know, I'm praying for these guys every day. It's tough, man. So what I would say is work hard, which is the typical thing that people are going to say, but stay out the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Philly is really obviously a, a, a great place. It's home. But it's obviously it's also a rough place. So, you know, you really have to watch your surroundings, watch the people you, you you're with, and you know, you can't be scared to live. So, I, you know, so you, but I would just say, just be focused, man. Like, you know, you can make it out of here. I'll even go as far as saying this: it's easier to me, it's much easier to make it. But it's also a lot of distractions, a lot more distractions now. We didn't have social media and this, uh, that, blah, blah. So they have to deal with that. But you just got to focus. Work your ass off and focus. You know, I got a son named Cody. You know, he's doing pretty good things. And I tell him, like, I tell him every day, just work. Mm -hmm. Work, work, work. Every day you should work. That's it. Work yep. hard. Work, work your hardest and focus. Mm -hmm. And you can make it. These guys all around the country, they making it. Mm -hmm. But the decisions that you make, man, you know, one decision can really end it. And I don't mean not just, yes, it can end your life, but it can end, you know, your aspirations. Mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely can do that. And, you know, I, 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 I really try to tell everybody, push yourself, push yourself and be around people that, you know, that's, you know, kind of like-minded because that's where I feel like everybody go the wrong because they follow you follow uh -huh. the wrong person you follow you follow the wrong route and then you know you in some situation that you know you can't get out of or you mm -hmm. can't take back and now that's it got you so that's what i would say i would say just push yourself just push mm -hmm. yourself push yourself and stay focused and really really try to stay around people that's like-minded that's you know pushing towards the same goals as you or at least similar mm-hmm 
No doubt. Well, hey, I appreciate that, man. Um, just like I said at the beginning, man, I can't thank you enough for, for your time of, you know, no, just no to be transparent, you know, sharing your story. And I remember vividly when you said, you know, initially it was like, ah, I'm not sure, but I, th that's why I really appreciate your time because this, this, was, this, this was more than enough. This was more than my expectation, man. And right. you know, just think, I, I, know, I know what it's like to, you know, like, I don't want to you know, talk about myself, you know what I'm saying? But I just thank you, man. Cause, cause right. this, no, I appreciate this, it. No, this was, fun. this was actually fun. You know, I, was this, I, I, knew, I knew, I knew. Well, I knew once I got you on, you was gonna have a great time. That's why I, I was wearing. It's crazy. I was talking to my man Aaron Hunter. He on here joking me to death. He's uh, <laughs> the, obviously DeAndre's big brother, and uh, I was like, man, I still, you know, I promised him I was gonna do it, and I don't want to be, you know, I would never not, you know, I gave him my word. I said this was today. Yeah. And I was like, but I just don't, uh, you know, what I, mean? I just don't know, man. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna be on there. I want to see. He's like, man, just do it. So I'm just like, all right, you know what I mean? But <laughs> That's, you know, we I knew you were going to have a good time. <laughs> man, man, hey, man, well, I'm going to up early about this. So, you know, no I'm, I'm happy that I did it. No doubt. Well, it's a pleasure, man. It's truly an honor, man. Yeah, um, man. So I'm going to turn it over to the people for the last uh, few minutes. Um, so I'm going to read the screen here, throw a couple questions at you, and, and, and uh, feel free. If you see anything that somebody types, um, go ahead and answer it. Um, okay. Man, Jay Mack from Norristown said, um, being who you are, um, you know, what, what, you know, what makes you, what made you coach at King with, with so much to offer and so much to give and just all your experiences. So my man, Kamal Yard asked me to uh, coach. And I was like, no, nah, I don't never want to coach. These kids, is, they bad as hell. They don't <laughs> listen. When I was coming from overseas, I'm like, uh-uh. I start <laughs> training people. And then I was like, you know what? Why not? And I had, a, I had an offer to go to Roman Catholic to be the assistant coach under Chris McNesby and, or be the head coach at, at, uh, at King. So I was like, uh, even though Roman is Roman, I would like to have my own shot. Mm -hmm. So I chose, I chose to do that. And, uh, you know, it's worked out, you know, pretty well for me these, uh, these years. No doubt. Um, old school 87 says, uh, what was your record up having for college on Sundays versus nerd? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, nerd is crazy. I don't know, but <laughs> I know this. I know my record is a high, high, high percentage. We we like the Bucks. I'm probably like the Bucks record this year up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably like that. That's my man, nerd. No doubt. Um, I got a question. Um, oh, um, my man, um, my homie from Norristown. Um, D, we call him D Money, Darren Mitchell. That's your fan. That's my cousin. D Money, that's my yo, D Money. That's my OG, man. D Money raised me. That's, that's, that's one of my guys, man. He might, he might be, he might be my biggest fan on earth. I'm dead serious. More listen, than anybody. Narstown, we was coming up. All D Money shouted out was Sean Colson. It didn't matter. Right. Sean right. Colson. That, that's how we heard about you. You know, just no social media, no YouTube. All D Money talked about was his cousin Sean Colson. That's it. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> that's what's up. Hey, question. What um. Tell me about the night when, you know, obviously, you know, you train, you we had, had some, you know, history with DeAndre Hunter. Tell me about that night when his name was called um an NBA draft, man. What was that like for you? Oh man, that was uh that was big for us. You know what I mean? You know, D worked, but well, I met him in eighth grade, but you know, he met he been working for that goal, you know, ever since, you know, since he was a little kid, you know, his his, his father died at a young age, you know, and then his brother took over. Uh, you know, raising them with his mom and his sisters, you know, so he always uh, had that goal. But, you know, I told him that, you know, we will have a chance to really do some big things. I didn't even say anything about NBA. I just talked about that he could do big things if we keep working. And, uh, you know, that night, just to just, you know, for him to, you know, it was almost like we all got drafted. You know what I mean? Me, Aaron, him, everybody's mom. It was just big and stuff that we talked about. So, you know, it was great, man. I know, you know, people probably saw the documentary with all of us. So um, the brotherhood with Aaron and all, and De DeAndre and myself and everybody. And it shows, like, our our feelings around that night. It just was like, you know, just, you know, he like a little brother, not really a son. He like a mm -hmm. little brother to me. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was, it was, it was big, man. And, you know, now he's doing big things for the Hawks. And, you know, he's going to have a great career. He had a really good Rookie rookie season average twelve a game and you know uh, you know obviously a really good uh, defender you know and you know got a chance to see him play quite a few times including you know I went out to L A me and Aaron and we saw him against LeBron and Kawhi back to back nights against wow. the Lakers and Clippers so awesome. you know his, his first year was you know he did well and I, I know he's going to you know continue to do well.
That's what's up. My man, James Nelson Stewart, you know, also a, a historian of high school basketball here in PA. Um, he said, who would your FLC um, all, like, start, like all, all time five be from, F from the 90s, from the 90s, FLC 90s, your, your top five? Minute. So, and and I, and I and I and I'll and I'll let this be our last question, and we're gonna we're gonna close out after this. Uh, I would probably say, uh, me for Ryan Hand. Uh, who else? I would say uh, I would say Tyrone Weeks. I gotta go with our starting five, man. I gotta go with Cliff <laughs> Dunn. You know, Cliff Dunn is not here anymore. Rest in peace, Cliff Dunn. And I gotta go with my man uh, Isaiah Russell. You know what I mean? That's the five. We won the championship, and, uh, you know, we was number three in the country. I don't know if that will ever be done at FLC. So, you know, I got to go with my boys that I that I rule with. And, you know, we had, it was nice other nice players, though. Uh, you know, Mike Robinson, Terry Johnson, um, uh, Mike New, you know, Arnold. New, New Arnold. Arnold. It's quite a few of those guys. Uh, so Denzel Yar, for what, so it was quite a few good players. But I got to go with my boys that, I, that, that rock with us. And it helped us lift up the trophy. No doubt. You know what I mean? So I got to go with my guys. <laughs> I can dig that, man. Hey, well, before we close out, man, is there any shout outs or just any last minute things you want to say? Oh, uh, man, just everybody. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I have no hate in my heart. You know, I got love for everybody. I want everybody to do well. You know, I'm doing well. So I got no complaints. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, you know, married, two kids, you know, got a great career. I'm traveling all around the country, training NBA guys and high school guys and got great relationships. So, you know, I live well. So I, I, I really got no complaints, man. Just, you know, I just want everybody to be, be safe out there. I guess that would be it. I just want everybody to really be safe because in this climate, you know, it's really bad out here, and especially where we live at. You know, obviously Philly already a rough time, but with all these, um, with all the things that's going on, you know, um, it's, it's, it's dangerous out here, man. And, you know, I definitely want, will say, Black Lives Matter, and uh, you know, especially our, you know, our women. I always want to look out, look out for them, make sure they are. But our black men, man, we gotta, you know, we gotta come together. A lot of times, I see us black men going against each other, yep. you know, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it, once we do that, that will really help what we trying to, what we trying to do, and where we can go as people. So course yeah well hey i appreciate that man i see the the the, the, the counter is counting us down again no got got 30 seconds so uh, i just want to no say my um my appreciations again um right. this entire interview is going to be on um my youtube channel tomorrow so i'll send okay. you the link um, oh, I can, I can get you my number i can send you the link so it's going to be out there forever man so thanks oh, again that's great. That's for great. allowing me to, to to pay homage to you and i'm, I'm glad glad I, glad glad i got a chance to get you on the show i knew we were oh, glad to get time oh no doubt i enjoyed myself i appreciate it. i'm glad i did it man appreciate you for sure yep and uh when 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 the world gets back and mlk is you know jumping off i'm gonna be on the sideline with the camera holding it down no doubt no doubt i appreciate that all right big dog god bless you thank you so much yes sir all right thanks